and welcome to episode 374 of the Awesome Comics Podcast, the place where the small press makes one hell of a big noise. I'm Vince Hunt, and joining me as always is the creator of the webcomic Vanguard, Dan Butcher. Hello. <laughs> he, I, he was browsing something online, which is why there's a bit of a delay, but what was he browsing? We'll find out in a minute. What do you mean was? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, of course, we are joined by the man awarded Toilet Concierge of the Year 2022. It's Mr. Tony Esmond. I've told you that secret story. Hello. <laughs> I know what Dan was browsing. Yeah, and we're not going to reveal what it is. But how did it turn out, Dan? Turn out all right? I agree with you, Tony. Thank you. There you yes, go. That's all you need. As, to I, know. as I often do. There's, and there's only Challenge one accepted. other person will know that well, what we're talking about now, and that's this week's guest. We're joined by a friend of the show, yes. artists on titles such as the Once and Future Queen, Cold Iron, and the upcoming Dead Seas. It's artist extraordinaire Nick Brokenshire. Hello, sir. Hi, everybody. It's me, Nate. <laughs> do you know do you know as he did that no. shouting thing it all came back to me it flooded back to me the fact that you had your pants on your head that time mm-hmm. um remember you did you did a picture of yourself with your pants on your head and then um you drew a picture of do you remember i want when we pretended we were, we were stuck on a desert island you drew a picture of a, a lady prostitute made of coconuts for us um <laughs> and the final thing of the three triumphant things i remember about you is the time that you came up to us at um, thought Bob and said, I'm not allowed to go out with you tonight. You guys are trouble. <laughs> <laughs> you know, my, my, Vic, my wife, said, um, Oh, you've got uh, an interview with your rowdy mates tonight, don't you? And I was like, Yeah. <laughs> Yes, yes, yes. yes. <laughs> we, we have made it. <laughs> yep. uh, although the last time we did see Nick uh, was at um, Thought Bubble, Share, sharing yep. a, a glass of a uh, her no or two with him. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I think I lost or something. I don't know. Or anyway, the last yeah, time yeah. in Harrogate, I'd be wondering about Rages. The Weatherspoons. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. yeah. Weatherspoons. Yeah. Oh, we of course it was. We took over that little room. Am I the only person? Room. Sorry about this, Nick. I'm the only person who's remembered that um, we've actually seen you since since the pandemic. <laughs> yeah, no, we know that. Yeah, no, that's no, where yeah, he told yeah, us he wasn't yeah. allowed to go to the pub with us. You've been told. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Don't just say he went there. Know. No, we didn't see him at all. We didn't no, see him at all. No, we didn't see him at all. I, I just want to let you know that we're very responsible um, people on this show. Shut up. Um, <laughs> okay, well, some of us are very responsible people. And there's actually I'm trying to figure be... out who you mean, but I can't no, figure yeah. it out. Actually, d- yeah. for all that we say, there's nothing to worry about, because by about a quarter past ten, we're like, I'm getting a bit tired now. I'm going to go back to the hotel. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ooh. We sat in my suite, didn't we, complaining that the coffee hadn't arrived. Yeah. That's all we did here. <laughs> Bruce complained about that the other week as well. I know, Just... we're still complaining about <laughs> oh, God, it. I wrote no... a very stern Yelp review. Look, this, this show <laughs> has become a litany of complaints. Normally it's us rambling about something, but there will be no complaints this week. No. Because Nick's, Nick's here. And the, yes. And we're, we're, the vibe is happy and all good. Ooh. And we're, we're going to be grilling him about how busy he's been since the last time he was on the show, which must be probably... Five three, years? Five Three, four, five years, something like that. Really? It? Yeah, I reckon oh, it could be five. God, because that was once you were working on Once and Future. When we oh my gosh, was it as long as as that? Yeah, I think it was. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's yeah. I think 20... you finished Amelia Cole, didn't you? At that point, yeah, yeah. 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 You're right. Then that's like 2016, 2016, 2017. Uh, Good yeah. lord, you were a a, a uh, troops though, weren't you? We saw you at one of those before the, the... Uh, the it... true believers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was yeah, the, that's before right. Before the pandemic. That, that yes. one. Yeah. Well, that's in right. the hotel. Yeah, yeah, mm. yeah. Mm. And then well, everyone, yeah, everyone right. lost a year due to that pandemic, and we don't know where it's gone. So. Yeah. <clears throat> Boy, yeah, what a time that was. Uh, but I, I was quite busy during that time. Well, making cold iron, but also like we had our kid then, so, so it yeah. was just. I, I almost, I mean, obviously, I did notice the pandemic, but we were just so busy. It kind of, it sort of just. Well, no. I think during the pandemic, you were kind of too important to speak to us because you were doing um, duets with Brian May online, weren't you? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> that was fun. Um, yeah. <laughs> is that, is that on YouTube show. still? Because I think I watched it on Instagram or something. I think you did it. Is where I was yeah, it. It's, it, it's, it is. It's, it's doing the rounds. Like, it wasn't obviously, we, we, didn't, we had nothing to do with Brian. He, he floated <laughs> out this video of himself um, playing the guitar to... Uh, what, what song was it? Was it Tell Your Mother Dan? I can't remember. But um, and so basically, we we'd been in the habit. Blues Harvest, my my, my covers band, 
and we'd been in the, in this habit during the, the lockdown of making these lockdown videos uh, whereby we would record our parts to a song and then create these uh, composite videos, you know, where, where oh, okay. everyone's at home, excuse me, um, everyone's at home playing their parts. And then we made these videos. We did a load of these. And we did one with one of the one of the the uh, like puppeteers from Star Wars. This guy called um, Mike Quinn. All right. And, yeah, all, all sorts of things. And then when when Brian did his thing, we 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 jumped on it and then added all, all our parts to it. And it, so it just looks like we had a jam with Brian May. But then, and we thought we were you know hot poo poo because of this. But then, of <laughs> course, all these other all these other really fantastic musicians started doing it as well and completely overshadowed us. No. So it was Ever. Well, didn't you do? Didn't you play with the dude who does Ghostbusters the song? Oh, we did. Yeah, we did that. Yeah, um, fucking we, hell. Ray we, Parker uh, Jr. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We um, <clears throat> we we were doing a gig called for the for the love of sci-fi because Moose Harvest does a lot of uh, uh, convention sort of parties, and uh, we got invited to do this show, and um, basically Ray Parker Jr. was one of the guests of the show. So we 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 did a live rendition of Ghostbusters with ah, cool. him, yeah, with him and all these like you know cosplayers, and it was it was pretty epic because he's he's a he's a killer guitar player. Oh and, wow! And, okay, and, yeah, and uh, yeah, like he's played on a lot of stuff that you wouldn't that you don't realize, but um, he uh, he's just amazing, you know, and a yeah, and a dude, a real a real cool oh, guy. Nice one. That's yeah. Cool. Oh, excellent. Yeah, yeah great. Yeah. So we've, we've got some really. Cool, cool footage of that as well. Anyway, do you know where cool. else you can find really cool dudes? <laughs> <laughs> that is all the creators that you it's can like, find on Comic yeah. House. <laughs> Our lovely sponsor. Oh no! Um, what? No. Didn't you know we were, we were sponsored, Tony? Yes. We've oh, been spon- it's like the we've Netflix sponsored- comics. Yeah, we've been sponsored for quite some time now, and I I don't know how it keeps happening. But yes, they. <laughs> <laughs> I did send him last week. I said, brace yourself for this week's. Uh, one, the one where we go on about last summer wine and me yeah. getting my cock caught in my trousers yeah. and I stuff like that. Yeah. Did I actually finish the the actual sponsorship? No, I, re- I remind uh, you at the end and you went, oh, fuck me, we're still in it, aren't we? Uh, yeah, I think you yeah. do something like that, don't you? Yeah, yeah. I yeah. guess a lot of people from not the UK would not have the know what the hell last the summer wine Well, was. shame on them, Dan. Shame on yeah. them. Shame on, them. Uh, shame on yeah. them as well if they don't know what Comic House is because Comic House <laughs> is an indie comic marketplace <laughs> oh, no. with oh, the no. difference. They love indie comics as much as we do and as much as you do because if you're listening to this show right now, you probably like indie and small press comics because that's what we talk about pretty much most of the time. But if you go to ComicHouse.com, there's a huge selection of titles on their database. If you self-publish yourself, you can list your books on there as well. It's another avenue to get your work out into a wider audience as well as the comic house app which is awesome it's basically as tony said it's like and i'm gonna steal this from him it's like netflix for comics Uh, um, it's a subscription service only three pounds a month you get access to an enormous library of digital indie comics which is growing all the time um and like what's in there at the moment dan we've got uh samantha fucks the world volume one submit or die volume one cinevore issue one uh space crash issue four and we've got uh, DUI Volume One. Uh, yes, Volume Two turned up for me in the post this week, and oh, good man, it was great. Yeah, selling quickly. That I think I it's going to be a sellout. You know, of course it we will. We have to do another print. I think. All for charity. Yeah, do well. another print. Yeah, yeah. We'll put, put links in the show notes, of course, for that. Um, More about that later. But yes, you can check out all of those um, comments we just uh, Dan just mentioned there on on, on the app, um, and loads more from all over the world. By the way, like wherever you hear this right now, wherever you are in the world. If you've got an indie comic, especially one that's maybe you've got a PDF that's just gathering dust, put it on Comic House. Mm. You never know, you know, who mm. might check it out and read it. Um, and if you want to find out more about it, go to comichouse.com and start your 14 day free trial now. And thank you very much to Comic House for sponsoring the show and supporting us, as always. I believe we just refer to it as putting up with us. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much what everyone does. <laughs> Pete, uh, Pete's. Um... Is it? Is he still like involved in the music industry? He is. Yeah, he's got yeah. some. I don't think we're allowed to say, but he's got some cracking people on his books. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think mm-hmm. one half of an ex twin, two twins used to sing. I think is on his books, isn't he? Is it the? Is it those guys with the big hair? Is it oh, one no. of those? Guys? No, no. It's not if, it, if it was from the eighties, that that doesn't narrow it down at all. Uh, <laughs> God, I, I have no idea who you're referencing there, T. I, don't you? I, no, I, oh, I'm I think I do. Music. I, I, I'm gonna. I've just texted oh. Nick. And I'll text you. 
Wow, yeah. is that wow, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All the, cool. oh, all wow. the mystery. The mystery. Oh. But, <laughs> but what is even... a mystery? What might be a mystery to some of our lovely listeners <laughs> is what you've been I'm I'm fucking loving this, this, this is Thanks. Yeah. Thanks, man. Yeah, yeah. I, I feel primed. I've had to loosen my clothing because of that. Like there's been a training montage of me in a shed in the middle of nowhere punching meat. No, that sounds wrong. Um <laughs> but, I've seen that I've seen that video. <laughs> As long as you subscribe, Tony. Um, <laughs> no, but some people may not know. I mean, they probably know your work, Nick, because it's amazing. But, yeah. like, obviously, you've been a busy man since the last time. Like, oh, what, 2016, whenever we spoke to you last. Because you moved into the Star Wars world even further. And, like, we've been speaking about your work on pretty much constantly over the past few years. There's always something, yeah. like, you know. You've always got um, something on the go, have not you? Yeah, yeah. How is how is the world of Star Wars at the moment? Because I, I saw recently that you're, I mean, because you're always you're super positive about comics anyway, which is one of the reasons we love you. Um, but I saw you sort of retweet about uh, there's an anthology coming. The ta- is it Tales of the Rancor Pit or something like that? You mentioned as well. Yeah, yeah. It, well, that's um, <clears throat> it's it, it's all to do with this guy Kevin Scott. He's um, he's uh, he, he's a. Uh, uh, a writer of screenplays and books and uh, and many comics and he and I became friends a few years ago and so he while when the Star Wars title uh, when the Star Wars books were still over at IDW he um, did a thing called Tales from Vader's Castle which were basically kind of like Tales from the Crypt style stories based in the Star Wars universe which would come out every Halloween oh um, wow okay so I I was I was one of the roster of artists that would contribute uh, stories for Cavan's like spooky you know uh, twist in the tail type stories, uh, and, and those came out for a few years. There was a sort of a continuity. There were there were kind of there was a, a an overarching story um, that he sort of wove with those things, but then IDW lost the Star Wars license. And it went reverted over to Dark Horse, and so we went over to Dark Horse as well, and kind of we've resurrected the idea of the of that you know Halloween thing, and um, but it's now called Tales from the Rancor Pit. So I think it's kind of less focused on Darth Vader and more just lots of different stories now. Um, so it's all, all ages horror, is it that sort of thing? Yeah, it? it's yeah, it's yeah, it's I mean, it's, all Star Wars is all ages. So um, right, so. It, it it is all ages, but it's just you know slightly just dis- you know mildly disturbing stories about oh like, okay uh, that, right that's nasty fates that befall people um you know and uh, you know you know the kind of thing tales from the crypt you know? yeah okay. yeah, I love yeah, yeah, yeah 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 definitely. so but but this time round um, whereas <clears throat> the way the way it used to work before um, C- Cavan would write all the stories. And then Franco, um, Francesco Francovilla would write, would draw the like the the couching story. So like there would be an overall story that he would draw, yeah. and then different artists would do all the different stories that would be interspersed throughout the main story. Um, so I've graduated now to the artist that does the big story. So oh, nice. and, nice. and other artists do the little stories. So that. So that's what that is, and it's it's really fun. It's just you know spooky, spooky business. Yeah, Star Wars seems to be jumping about a bit, doesn't it? I mean, it, it's every so, so many years it seems to find a new home, doesn't it? I suppose. Yeah, um, it's still. I mean, it's still over at, at, at Marvel because, like, Marvel deal with the, if you want to call it, the more mainstream component of the right. comic, the comic side, and then IDW and subsequently Dark Horse were dealing with like the more. Uh, like the more peripheral storytelling, okay. Um, that's that's the idea anyway, so far. But yeah, it's kind of always pretty fluid, um, as is as is everything really. You know, the, seems to be. You're going to go yeah. for Conan, haven't you? Yeah, it's that yeah, sort of thing, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I, I think that you know everything. Everything moves with the, with the tides of tastes, you know, and uh, and all that business, as well as what sells and what doesn't sell, and. You know the changes in, in 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 society and stuff. It, it all has an effect, you know. Yeah, well, it's interesting you mentioned Kevin Scott because he's the writer on your newly announced book, isn't he? Mm. 
Yes, he is. Yeah. Did you want to? Yeah. Did you want to have a chat about that man? Because this is we're, we're going to go back and talk about some of your other stuff in a minute. But I thought that was a good opportunity to talk about Cavan at the moment, isn't it? Oh, I sure. met him, I think, at a Lancaster Comics Day. I think he might be mates with John Freeman. I'm going to say. Oh, he will. Yeah, no doubt. He know he knows a lot of people. He he's actually um he comes from he comes from if I'm if I remember correctly, he he did a lot of like screenplays and radio dramas okay. and things like that. Like work, he's worked for the BBC, and I think he cut his teeth on. Remember that BBC magazine? Remember that that it was just like all things BBC. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, you know, a bit like well, no, it's not like TV times. So it, it's just it was just like you know, horse and pony or guns and ammo, that sort of thing. And right. It was one, okay. It was one that was just all about the BBC. I think that's where he came from. So I don't know if he was a journalist or what, but he ended up getting into screenplay writing and radio playwriting and then it found his found his way into the geek stuff with Doctor Who. Yeah, that's done, where I think I first heard of him. Yeah. 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 He's done a lot of a lot of radio plays of Doctor Who. But you know, he has a big love of comics as well. So he's he's kind of, kind of parlayed his stuff into the world of comics. So he works for like Marvel and everyone. He works for everyone. And uh and but you know, I have known him a few years. We we connected at Star Wars. We've done like panels at Star Wars celebration together and stuff like that. So we we've become good pals. Um and he basically said to me, "Hey, how'd you fancy, you know, doing something completely not Star Wars?" And I'm like, "Absolutely, let's do it." So we we put this idea out of. It used to be called um, what was it called? Uh, I've forgotten. Anyway, it's called Dead. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah. We're, yeah. we're doing a thing called Dead Seas now, and it took us a while to to land it. Actually, we had it with for a little while. We had it with Legendary. You know, Legendary. Um, yeah who do the the movies and stuff well they have like a branch of comics as well um yeah and uh so we shopped it around we took it to 2000 ad they passed on it and then eventually i think because we both had such good um relationships with idw we struck up a, a nice deal with them and and uh now we're putting it out through that through them and it's a it's i have to say uh, it's the best work i've done i think I, I oh reckon. good stuff man um, yeah like it, it's I've taken a couple of leaps with it and a couple of chances that I, I wasn't sure were going to land, and I think they've landed. <laughs> That's so vague. <laughs> uh, it got I, it got a bit it got a bit of heat, didn't it? When it because it got announced what two weeks ago, something like that, three weeks ago, did it or? Yeah, well, what it is is IDW, uh, like a few people are are sort of launching these originals lines, right? Um, so. They've they've launched this originals line and like one of their main guys is Scott Snyder. He's on board with with his original, you know, create our own thing. Okay, a few people have got involved and we are the. I last. think Bendis is doing something there as well, isn't he? Oh gosh, is he really? Yeah, um, I think so. Yeah, yeah, I won't be surprised because like they've really been sort of pulling out the stops. I think, you know, it, I don't think I'm talking out of turn if I say that like the fact that they lost the star wars license and various bits and bobs has you know really caused them to have some major shakeups and also you yeah know, idw like like many companies have gone through the ringer over the past few years um, yeah so they're having to well know, the, thing, the thing is with idw is people don't realize that they were the third company for years you know yeah. you know they sold a lot more books than image do who we all often think of as the third company don't we but IDW Absolutely. were really up there, and I think that down to, I mean, they're very well known for their IPs, aren't they? I think that was part of the reason, you know. Well, 30 Days a Night changed the game, didn't they? Oh, yeah. That was big. That right. day. That was, yeah. You know, that, I, yeah, I think yeah. Yeah. there was a couple of years where everyone had bought that, didn't they? And it was so, so many people had talked about that. Yeah. It Lock, seems so Lock long and ago. Key is IDW, isn't it? Lock and Key, right? Uh, yeah. yeah, I think so. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. 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 A lot of Transformers stuff, yeah. you know, that sort of yeah. thing as well. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's the home um, of the turtles. It, it's the home of the turtles at the moment, isn't it? Is it yeah, is it yeah. yeah, yes, yeah. Although I think, um, I think, hang on, no, Transformers is leaving. Uh, um, yeah, so Star Wars are leaving. Transformers is leaving. I right. think turtles are sticking around, but yeah, so yeah, they're, they're they're just expanding. I think. What happens to continuity when a, a title leaves one publisher and goes to another? Can they refer back to old storylines? It depends, it doesn't work? it? It's, it's interesting because you know Conan's just left Marvel, is not he? Mm. Yeah. yeah, we talk about him like he's a real person, don't we? But you know, <laughs> he's, he's he's just left. Well, so he's he not an Avenger in... anymore. Oh, well, that's the thing, man. He was don't. in the Savage Avengers, which I was buying, oh, and gosh. I went to read it on the Marvel app the other day, and it's gone. What? Oh, oh man, because he's. Yeah. 
because he's in it, I guess he's an IP that they can't show. I guess. Anymore. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's it. funny because with the Star Wars thing, they can't do that. Um, because all because every piece of um every piece of writing that has been released um is all like whether it be all ages, whether it be anything, movies, comics, books, um, of every level, if there's if there's actual storytelling to do with the Star Wars universe, then it means it's in canon. Since twenty twelve, everything is canon. Uh, because okay. everything passes through um the story group at Lucasfilm. So like everything theoretically fits together. Um so like <laughs> All the stuff that we've done at, ID, at IDW will will some of it is literally continuing at Dark Horse. So like the the High Republic stuff, it's just it's just changing the label. That's all. But it's it's right. still, it's still the same story. Because they, they're very into that canon thing. I know. I look, if you if you Google your name, Nick, it comes up with is it called Wikipedia or something like that? Is yeah. that right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Star Wars one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, which is yeah. the Star Wars yeah. Wikipedia almost. You know. I, yeah, I, I, I think it's probably you know if if you think about it, I mean in a in a cold perspective, it's the IP, isn't it? The hmm. the the more canon that you have for your for this IP, the more you can mine. And of course, yes, probably creators won't get credited for it, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You know, you could, we could talk about that until the cows come home. But certainly, you know, there's especially with Star Wars, there's characters appearing in live action stuff that happened in an yeah. animated stuff or a comic book and there's yeah. some and then f- for the people that don't know all of these things they just think oh who's that character where someone else is going oh my god they were on they were in an issue of this um <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that, who was that green rabbit that was like a bounty hunter in the jackson film? wasn't it yeah jackson. Did jackson? <laughs> i immediately thought bucky o'hare <laughs> yeah oh he's he's pre-bucky o'hare yeah yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but um, he's he's come back and he or something is that right? Yeah, he's he? back. Well, he yeah. he's he's Kevin's little baby. Um, <laughs> yeah, like uh, basically, Kevin has been he'd been because he's an absurd character. But like, Kevin had been you know lobbying with Lucasfilm. Please let me bring uh, Jackson back, and eventually they let him bring him back. Um, in an in an issue that I did I did a, a, a like a B story in, um, but uh, like. Uh, I'm not. I'm not really allowed to say anything about it. <laughs> <laughs> but let's just say that I may have some rabbit in my future. Oh, nice. Yeah. Oh, good. So, yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. All, that's all I can say. Yeah. <laughs> who who created him? Was it Carmine who first drew him? It, it was one of those guys. It, yeah. I mean, I think Al Williamson drew him originally. Oh, wow. Wow. Uh, which is bizarre. That. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it could have been Carmine. I can't remember who's writing at the time. It might have yeah. been for the for, it might have been for the weekly strip rather than rather than the comic as well. Oh, um, okay. Yeah, the newspaper remember. strip, you mean. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah that's why I saw him in the British Weekly, I think is where I saw him. And I didn't realise he was green because it's obviously he was yeah. black and white. But yeah. Right. That was back when they the first movie had finished and they just thought, oh, we'd fucking do what we like. You know, they just went a bit mental, didn't they? And did all sorts. Of <laughs> well, yeah, they used to get. They would give. They would give the writers and the artists, like, not carte blanche, but they would say, "You're allowed to use these characters, and here are the few little snippets of, of uh, 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 reference material." But that was it. Like the very little. Yeah. So they ended up just inventing stuff. You know. Yeah, when- it's it's crazy. I was reading some stuff about Star Wars comics the other day, and because there was no videos back then when the, the artists were doing it, they would just make up some of the characters. So in the first Star <laughs> in the first Star Trek comics, the Scotty was a blonde dude because he didn't have reference for him. <laughs> okay. And then and then when Marvel got the license after the motion picture, they said, "Oh, you can use the Star the Star Trek characters. You can't. You just can't use um, any of the villains or anything like that." So and what we're going to do? So in one of the issues, they had Kirk and Spock fighting gnomes. <laughs> yeah. didn't they do like a story set after star wars but before empire and it was a splinter of the mind's eye yeah oh, that's yeah. a mad book and that. they, they had yeah. to, alan dean foster in it or yeah. retcon that didn't they because it's completely yeah that's right yeah there's comic of that now they've done a comic of it haven't they yeah yeah the, yeah they've done a couple of things like that where where they've they've gone and just made the comic of it anyway even though mm. it's com- yeah. way off base but yeah crazy so they did the same with the robocop 2 screenplay didn't they because it was like nothing like is that right dan 
the I, I know they had to change it considerably. Well, the that the Robocop tray, the comics they came out from. Uh, what's that comic company that did it? They basically worked from Frank Miller's original screenplay that's before right. they chopped yeah, into yeah. Robocop two and three. That's, and that's right. fucking nuts. Yeah, yeah. I like all that sort of stuff. It's when people didn't quite have the internet and didn't take everything quite so seriously. You know, didn't threaten to murder people because you know someone's costume was wrong or something. You know, it's a bit like that, wasn't it? You know. Yeah, I think to be honest, I think that that's kind of. I I think that that has been the attitude behind a lot of what Kevin and me have done with the Star Wars stuff. Like we we tried to inject a little bit of that, you know, slightly gung ho, not hung up on continuity spirit into the stuff we've done. Yeah. Um, because like I did, I came up with a story because because I used to write them as well when, when I worked with IDW. Like <clears throat> I didn't work cool. with a writer; I just worked wrote the stuff myself. And I, I used to really try on with them and, and, and say, right, I want to I want to incorporate, you know, this and I want to do that. And like it would take a, it would take some some doing, but they would sort of eventually go, yeah, OK, yeah, give it a go. And like that was very much my attitude. I wanted I wanted to have that kind of uh, late 70s, early 80s comic, Star Wars comics vibe going on. OK, you know, because yeah. I, they're, they're, I'm surprised they were that good because I submitted um, full frontal Princess Leia nudity. <laughs> one of my stories and they didn't go for it yeah, it's because yeah, yeah. you chose to do personal photos though Tony that was there close up brown eye <laughs> what mm. oh, dear dear god <laughs> <laughs> always too far rowdy time. mates rowdy oh, mates oh, oh, <laughs> <laughs> too far <laughs> <laughs> Vic is in the next room listening with a glass on the on, you know oh yeah, door, yeah. <laughs> she, gives, she gives me that look when she tells me off just by looking at me yeah. when she <laughs> Do you remember that game Manic Miner? I yeah. do. Yeah. Do you, yeah. you remember there was a there was a, a follow up called Jet Set Willy. Oh yeah, Jet Set Willy. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. You remember, like one of the character the character was Jet Set Willy's wife, who would like stand at the top of the stand at the top of the screen, <laughs> like with a with like with her arms crossed, like tapping her foot, like waiting for him to. To anyway, then move on. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Andy Capps misses down there with yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. That's a rolling it. pin or something, isn't it? Yeah, that's yeah. It. yeah. <laughs> I'm not saying that's what my missus is like. But... Yeah. <laughs> oh, how did the podcast go? Yeah, the recording didn't work. I don't know what yeah. happened. <laughs> you can't hear it ever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's good. So you doing like, so? Moving on to the thing with with Cavan Scott. Then are you able to give us a little? a little rundown of what it's about nick oh yeah 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 it's um it's basically um the way we describe it is it's poseidon adventure with ghosts so okay like um it's a bunch of it's a bunch of convicts having to deal with being on a sinking ship full of ghosts um and 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 these ghosts are are they're not like you know uh vague spectral forms they're 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 twisted. They're twisted, nightmarish, and sort of s- s- semi semi corporeal things. So they ha- literally have to fight them. Um, and so it, it, that's it, basically. It's just fighting fighting monsters in a sinking ship. That's the, that's oh, cool. The well, I'm yeah, awesome. yeah. That's yeah, that sounds good. Amazing. And yeah. mini series is it? Did you say it, it's a six part a six part mini series? Yeah. Um, cool. I'm just drawing issue three at the moment. Oh, and right. Then, yeah, it's really, it's really fun. It's fun, Hunt. and it's hit, it's hit, it's hit diamond now, isn't it? It's in previews. Is that right? It has. You can order the, you can order issue one, which comes out in December. Right now, you can order it now. Mm-hmm. Put your cool. So, um, I mean, with these sort of like, you know, you, you you're working on these mini series. I mean, your your sort of artistic process, especially with the, you know, the pandemic and everything, the, the your working methods. How has that changed? Because obviously you were working to a certain way leading up to when the world basically went dark, um, cool. which probably involved a lot more um, networking, going to events and stuff. But yeah. when that goes, when the events and everything else goes away, you're kind of were you for, forced to, to kind of sort of change the way you work in a in a way? And has it made? How has that affected your working process day to day? <clears throat> it's weird when the, when the pandemic started because everybody everybody in the comics industry 
had that few months of weird panic where they thought everything was going to go down the pan, if you recall. Yeah. yeah. Um, because the because the diamond situation went, um, you know, tits up and and then like for DC um, and everyone thought, oh, this is it. This is it now. This, it's all going to start falling apart. So I um, I just thought I was still working on, on the IDW Star Wars stuff and we'd landed the Cold Iron um, gig with Comixology before this all kicked off, so we so so that that was all that was all in the chamber wait, waiting to be done. And then it, when it all hit, we were all waiting to see if you know people were going to start pulling plugs on things. Right. Um, um, but no one did. So basically, we just all kept working. So like um, I th- literally throughout all of 2020. I was working with Andy Diggle on Cold Iron, and we were just always looking over our shoulder to see what happened. But as it turned out, it was one of the busiest times and best-selling times for comics. So, yeah, you know, which which is in a way understandable. But like from the perspective of like a lot of the pros, we were just waiting for the shoe to drop. Yeah. You know, yeah. I mean, a lot of people were having pens down and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah, they? And I, th- yeah. I, th- I think it, it took a, took its toll. That, like you say, I think that's the best way that put it as well like even though you're busy you're looking over your shoulder and it definitely took a toll like m- mental health wise because even though you, you're busy like you say if you if you're constantly looking over your shoulder like is this st- still going to happen that's that's exhausting what aren't they say. telling me there's yeah. all that sort of paranoia gets into us but mm. isn't there? yeah well and also like i think i don't know about you guys but like if truth be told i think a lot of people were you know we were i think there was a lot of really apocalyptic thinking going on and mm. um and um you know there were people just thinking wow we're about to enter a new middle uh, a new middle ages here you know and uh, it, you know uh, what the hell does comics matter you know in in the midst yeah. of all in the midst yeah. of all this business mm. so sometimes like i i occasionally fell prey of this myself like like a lot of people you know uh, mm. I, I was just like what the hell am i doing you know like and and i'll, I'll hold my hand up I, I went through a fair few days of working absolutely blotto on whiskey because <laughs> just because i was like yeah. uh, what's the point you know why am yeah. i doing it? yeah but like but i got i got through it and thankfully you know i did because it meant that i, I was still getting paid throughout the throughout the period mm. and i was and you and you got to you got to work to almost yeah. it's worth throwing yourself into work to get away yeah. from thinking it, about it, problems, isn't it? You know, it yeah. literally was that. Yeah, there was work yeah. and whiskey and baby, and that's it. Yeah, you know? yeah. <laughs> I was actually quite jealous of those people. So when I for, for those that I know, I, re- I retired. I'm a pensioner, and I I, I did a sort of started doing a part time job just a month before COVID hit, and then as oh. soon as COVID hit, they took me on full time. They asked me to come on full time in a role because it was associated with what was going on. And um, I was working like a bastard. I was doing like 14 hour days every day. And I was sort of jealous of all these people going, oh, I've run out. I've watched the whole of Netflix now. And all this sort of thing. And I'm thinking, you know, the one time when the whole world is almost like, you know, everyone yeah. I know has got this like having a little break, watching yeah. some Netflix, you know. And I was like, fucking hell, I didn't stop working. Yeah. yeah. I think, I think wait, sorry to interrupt that. No worries. Like, um, the, I think a lot of that was to do with a lot of the people that create the content the media content that we watch with our eyes on on youtube and stuff they were suffering from that stuff yeah. so there was, yeah. there was a lot there were a lot of like actors and movie makers and tv makers who were finding themselves at a loose end and i think they were creating a bit of this weird sort of mental instability whereas actually most people were just you know furlough or not working you know we were just yeah. cracking on yeah, with, with it yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was having a conversation with someone the other day, and it's when I, I, I'm sure there'll at some point be some kind of study done on this. But it, to me, there was like people I knew who were doing loads who found it quite energizing just having that time to themselves. And then there was people who just found it utterly depressing and couldn't work. You know, well, it seems to be both sides of the fence sometimes, you know, no sort of general mi- middle ground. Some people just found it hard to get motivated, and some people just sort of knuckled down and got on with How stuff, would you, you guys f- put yourself in that one or two? Energized got, I, or. I got a, I got a lot done. We I mean we just started tribute, so we 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 busy busy got loads of comics mm. done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah, same here. Really. Yeah, yeah. Vince, what about you guys? You? For me, um, 
I don't know. I was consuming more. I, I, I guess I was just a bit inundated with too many influences. I think it did take it out of me a bit. I must say. Okay. Yeah. Um, in a lot of ways, I think I think it did for some people, but it's just trying to find that rhythm again when someone something knocks you off. Yeah. Piece, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, I was thinking as we were talking about like how the comics industry, obviously, like comics were doing quite well. I I suddenly thought. I mean, we've talked about how digital has moved and like you know what happened to comicsology, blah blah blah. The comicsology move to Amazon happened after everything. I say went back to normal. You know what I mean, people. Yeah. yeah. Um, relatively that, speaking, that happened relatively after. You know, when when things had settled yeah. down a bit. What would the comics industry be like if that had happened before? Oh my goodness, that's a really good question. <laughs> yeah, that's a really good question. That's weird because yeah. I had quite a lot of contact with Comicsology, so I was in meetings with them for No Braille yeah, during right. that. Yeah, uh, I told you the story about the person I was in meetings with, didn't I? Who split up with her boyfriend in the middle of COVID and was stuck in a flat with them. Oh, oh that's no. rough. Oh god, that was awful. When that that sounded, yeah, yeah. God. So I had quite a lot to do with them, and they was they were very much sort of actively seeking new product for their site because they realised, you know, that now's the time. Yeah. You know, and I was, I mean. Uh, that's where I was buying it. That's where a lot of people, I, I'd imagine, yeah. were, were buying stuff. Yeah. Well, actually, um, that's that's kind of why Cold Iron was like it felt weirdly important for me uh, when we were doing it because mm. of that. You know, like it was like, wow, we're we're really doing something here because this could be the new paradigm. You know, like we're yeah. we're we're all stuck in these houses and we gotta we gotta keep ourselves sane and mm. by looking at comicsology and stuff like that and um, and lo and behold. Well, that's, that's interesting because maybe some people haven't heard. We talked about it a couple of weeks ago, Cold Iron. But so for those that don't know, Cold Iron is a, is, was a deal with Comixology where it hasn't actually come out as a physical comic yet. It is going to. But how did that come about and how did your relationship with Andy Diggle start, dude? Well, I've known Andy for a long time because um, okay. he, he, um, he lives, uh, well, I probably shouldn't say, um, he lives near me um, and uh, I met him through, how did I meet him? I met him through. Uh, do you know Alex Packnadel? Yes. Yeah, um, yeah. So he he um, he and I had met at the Lakes show, and basically, I, you know, a lot of people, you know, that live in the north, kind of met other people that live in the north at the Lakes. So I met Andy through all that kind of crew, and uh, I ended up going out drinking with uh, those guys quite a lot. And um, so we always used to joke, you know, that we were going to do something. And th- and here's me, you know, barely able to to draw a comic and hanging out with um with Andy Diggle and just going, yeah, okay, Andy, yeah, I'll, I'll draw a comic with you anytime. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so basically, you know, we we became chums, and then one day, like we did, uh, we did a a signing together at Traveling Man, and um, he was signing, I don't know what, and I was signing some Star Wars thing, probably. And he just said, um, "Do you know what? I I fancy doing some some work with just mates with stuff like with people that I know rather than you know the the usual thing, which is where where the company just sticks you with a writer or with an artist that you never ever really get to meet." Yeah. And so I said, "Well, I'm right here, mate, anytime." And that's how that came about. And so he he threw a bunch of ideas at me, and I told him the ones that I like and invariably i like stuff to do with you know mythology and fae stuff and all that business um and fae is in fairies not you know effeminate yeah not that there's anything <laughs> nothing wrong, wrong with it no, no. a sexist yeah. would say yeah yeah sorry that's right um well i, I actually wondered if he was from the isle of man because that's where it's set isn't it no he he's not but he's um but he has a lot of connections to it like i think he used to go there a lot when he was a kid so right. he has a lot of fondness for it and he knows a lot about the place um that's yeah so he, he has a big you know personal connection to the place yeah um, for me like anything to do with like nature and celtic business and just stuff with trees and forests that's it i mean sort of folk horror thing wasn't it yeah, yeah. it's got that that digging stuff yeah totally yeah so yeah oh, cool. that's, yeah so basically i hadn't seen him do much for a while actually I, maybe i just lost track of him you know sometimes you lose track of where people are working these days but i think Maybe it was the stuff like the Uncanny and stuff he was doing at Dynamite was the last stuff I saw him do. Yeah, he was doing like James Bond stuff. If, if That's I right. Yeah. yeah. Um, um, he he's very um he's uh he, he knows a lot about you know army stuff and uh all all that kind of procedural business. Um, 
So he, he's always, he, he tends to focus on that kind of stuff, spy stuff, army stuff. Um, but he just, he's also, what m- many people don't know, is that he's a complete, like, D&D geek. So, like, yeah. um, so he's just been wanting, <laughs> 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 wanting to uh, do something to do with, you know, that business. So that's where I came in. I'm choosing to go okay. right, Tony. Yeah, I was just done to wind you up. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, oh, cool. Okay. Because, I mean, did you want to give a little summary of what it's about you know because it's if you've got if you've got an amazon prime account you can read it for free at the moment can't you is that right yeah yeah it's um yeah so yeah well the comiXology um originals thing was that's another thing you know where where basically the companies are trying to create here's the thing like everybody's trying like frenzy to create lots of good quality fresh ip because that's where the money is now like that's where netflix comes a knocking on the door you know yeah. and and it's ha- it happens a lot you know yeah. so that's where everybody's at and then when when uh, when andy when andy was like putting this together he started a company and then he, he made the deal with comixology and you know basically we're just creating ip and so i've forgotten the question now you have what was it about? about yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was just going to talk until someone stopped me. Um, <laughs> that's, um, the per- that's the perfect guest. Perfect guest, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, the, it's basically um, your classic um, reluctant heroine story. So you've got your, your 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 main character called Kay who encounters a, a lost child. And as it happens, that child is tethered to the land of Fae or Fairy. And um, you know she's basically got to uncover how how this child has ended up on our plane, and try and figure out what to do with her. And it, it takes her on a little adventure um, into magical places. That's basically it. And, yeah, uh, I mean that, that's yeah. a cool. That's a cool. Yeah, sorry. Oh, to me, it's like because she's one of those classic characters who you begin to sense there's more about her than meets the eye as well. You you sense mm. it when you sort of see her in, interacting with her her grandmother and why she chosen to be this person and, you know, this sort of thing. And yeah. it's, it's, it's a whole bunch of spoil because everything happens, everything changes in the last episode, in the last issue, doesn't it? You know? Oh, yeah. Yeah, majorly, yeah. Yeah, you, you, the, Kay is, yeah. You, you get the sense that... Um, uh, that she's made of she's made of 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 sterner stuff yeah than, yeah she's than, very likable isn't she she's almost like a a jessica jones kind of character isn't she sort of yeah, the jack, yeah. jacket wearing you know yeah exactly i i when we were uh creating the characters and stuff andy um was drawing a lot of um inspiration from some of the like alternative performers from the 90s like pj harvey and kirsten hirsch and Okay. Um, a, a lot of like the real sort of riot girl um, yeah. people who were, you know, like they were kind of important um, performers in terms of like pushing, you know, feminism forward and music. And so she, she's inspired by those kind of people. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I can see some PJ Harvey. Harvey's great. I love her stuff. Yeah. yeah also, sure. she's the, isn't she the bum on the front of the Strokes album? That's how the story <laughs> that goes, isn't it? Right? <laughs> That's what I heard. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I wouldn't be surprised, actually. But um, yeah. she's oh, she's wonderful, PJ Harvey. I wonder what she's up to these days. Uh, I'll give her a call. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, but the thing is, I was going there with, with that is, it feels like there's something more coming, another mini in that man. That's the way I feel about it. You yeah, open a door to something, don't you, at the end? Yeah, for sure. Um, in, in, the, in, the collected, in the collected edition, which we'll finally see at some point, yeah. Um, Andy has written a sequel, um, so he he's he's written the first part of what happens next. Oh wow! Okay, and have you drawn so, it? Have you? No, it's it's a prose piece. Oh, so, okay. So you'll get to read some of what happens next, and you know, depending on you know, depending on the winds of fate, we either yeah. will will not draw draw it. We'll see. Um, but but you at least get to to find out some of what happens next yeah oh, nice so how does that work with comiXology so you you go to them for the digital release do they then go to someone else like dark horse to release a physical copy i know they have some deals don't they with different companies yeah um yeah comiXology have 
a deal with another company <laughs> uh, <laughs> that that basically will collect their comicsology originals into well we're still we're still ironing out whether they're going to be released as singles again or whether it's just going to okay. be a single a single uh, you know trade uh, or collected edition i we're not sure about that one but it will be released physically by this cool. one who you may have not just mentioned a minute ago <laughs> <laughs> that's good because and the other thing with it man is i can see it coming out as issues because like we were sharing on our whatsapp group um with tom we were sharing the covers and they're strong covers man they're really um boldly iconic aren't they you know oh thank you but you know what um the um the second one the one with the the girl mona where she's just like sort of crouching on the road and underneath there's like this pattern thing underneath her yeah uh, so I floated that one out on, on social media as you do, and uh, and flipping Kelly Jones jumps in and says, "Dude, you know this album is, uh, I mean, album this uh, this cover is amazing." Oh, you know, nice. Kelly Kelly Jones, who of course wow. is someone who makes incredible covers. Mm. So like I I was uh, was smiling ear to ear after that. That's awesome. Awesome. Yeah. And and if anyone's interested in Dead Seas and wants to hear a story from you about the sea, they can get a little taster of. The seafaring world, can't they? In um, the third and the fourth cold irons, I'm going to say. Oh yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. It's funny because um, both both cold iron and this new one has got lots and lots of sea drawings of the sea, which I discovered I really enjoy doing. I was very very nervous of drawing the sea, but okay. it turns out it's actually very therapeutic to to draw. So yeah, so, no, it looks lovely, man. The colors, the colors on it are great as well. I'd say yeah, Trina yeah. Farrell from from uh, well, she's on a lot of things these days. Yeah, um, yeah. So like, I think the letter was Simon Boland, isn't it? And he, I think yeah. Simon, we were saying that he letters everything in the comics world now. It just doesn't. Yeah, it's yeah. true. He does. Nice guy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> cool. So how does it work with comicsology? Do they? Is it the same as a physical release sort of system? Do they? Do they give you an editor, or do you come on board with an editor, or? You know, do they do they provide the colorists, or how does it work with them? We we literally did everything. Like we didn't right. have an editor. Um, Andy, you see, I mean, because Andy, what Andy is an editor, so he was a two thousand eight editor, yeah, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah. So he was the one, and you know what? I have to, I have to say that working with Andy was was brilliant because because he was my mate. Then yeah. there was no there was no pussyfooting around. If he, if he if he thought something was a bit shit, boy oh boy did he tell me, like in, in, in no uncertain terms. Like he would just call up and say, "What, what's this?" You know, and and I'd, I'd be like, "Well, it's it's, it's so and so." And then he goes, "Do you think that you know?" And then he'd really like hammer it home. But like I was really glad of it because in general, like when you're working with with editors and with other writers that you don't see in person or that you don't know very well, there's a lot of real gentle. You know, hey man, this is really great, but you know, yeah, like, um, yeah. But like with with when it's your mate, it's like yeah, you're way off base, mate. <laughs> oh mate, I've seen this. I've seen this so much uh, in you know in the world of no brow about them going. Oh, this is so lovely, so lovely. And then yeah. they'll take two steps away and they go utter shit. It won't sell. You know, <laughs> yeah. Not with no brow editors, I might say with other editors. But there's such a two faced stuff going on in a lot of artistic realms, isn't it? You know, they seem to say, you know, these are lovely staples. You know, they do a bit of that, don't yeah. they? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah well, I think I mean, you're right. The thing is, though, that, you know, it depends where you're coming from because, like, Andy's coming from the world of, you know, got to sell those issues, you know? Yeah. Mm. yeah. Get it get it right or get out, you know? Yeah, that's the world but, we should um, be living in. With yeah. 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 I mean, yeah. It, it, it's, it is when you're, you know, when you're getting someone paying, you know, reasonably good money for you to do it. So you've got to do it right. So, Yeah. So yeah, so basically Andy was the editor, and uh, oh cool. So it's a bit like an image system then, where you you go yeah. to them with the sort of the team and everything, and yeah. I I don't I can't speak for anyone else because I do know that, um, like I, I think they had a, another like comic so comicsology. What was the thing prior to the originals? It was called comicsology something. Submit is it? Submit. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. I do I do know that they had a certain. Um, you know, like editorial c- component to what they were doing, where they would say, you know, this needs to be better or or whatnot. But 
right. um, with, with with the way we did it, we were in complete control. Uh, as long as as long as we got it in on time, you know, then it was all right. Okay, so they 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 then show the release schedule and and it it was. I mean, I think I read it. I read the first two, and then I came back and read the the second two. But the it's really it was it was released what monthly was it? I can't remember now. It it was yeah. The the weird thing about it was because it wasn't announced in you know in previews in any way because there was no physical yeah. release. So Diamond is completely out of the out of the the loop. So it was a it was a bit of a strange one to be honest. Like to to to, to suddenly be told oh it's out next week and. You know, I I didn't even know. Like when the first issue came out, uh, okay, we got, yeah, yeah. got an email saying, "Yeah, it's out next week," and it's like, "What?" You know, and uh, <laughs> do you so, have yeah. to organise the press around it? Then do you have to like contact comic book resources and all this sort of thing yourself? Or no, 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 they do all that. that. Yeah, yeah, that's good. I mean, I think when you're a company that's you know got Amazon, you know, as part of your your armory, it's a lot easier to get that promo out, isn't it? I'm guessing. I you think. Know. I think he, I don't know if you, you're I don't know if you're tuned into like a, a lot of the uh, controversy around the Amazon Comicsology thing, but um, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> but uh, yeah. I think one of the problems is this: like you've got two distinct bodies who have jumped into bed together, mm. and they're trying to find a way of making this thing work. One of them has just spent 10 years doing it one way and this other company you know i.e amazon are coming in saying well we've got all this money let us let us take over but they haven't been doing it but they also have this massive massive you know uh, influence and reach so there's obviously in theory uh, you know good work to be done there right yeah but, but, yeah yeah but, but but they just haven't ironed out all the all all the problems so um, what, what as as normal, you know, fans are just extremely impatient. So, when, when <laughs> whenever I float out a thing saying, "Hey guys, you know, go into Comicsology and read Cold Iron," then you get twenty people saying, "Comicsology, fix your fucking app." You know what I mean? And it's like, <laughs> um, like oh, was that one of us? It wasn't me. Come and put your hand. No, <laughs> which is which is understandable. Sorry for swearing, but um, that's right. Totally understandable, but. At the same time, guys, it's still there. It's just that it doesn't work in the same way that your thing used to work, you know. But I have I have heard also why some people are, you know, concerned about it because they've lost a lot of their DC content or like it's it's been it, it's oh, been really yeah. I think oh, I, okay. I think, I think a lot of the content has been wiggled around and moved around and not not properly formatted here and there. So you know, it's I, I can uh, see I why. I think I the think, one that would probably affect you the most is the fact that you can't subscribe to a series anymore. Right. You know? Yeah, and that, yeah, unless that's that, different that, from Comicsology Originals. Yeah, I think that's right still. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I, I think I, I need to... Uh, I mean, I've whinged about it a couple of times, but every time I've had a bad experience with it, I'm trying to read it, like use a desktop to read it, and I think using an, oh. I, an iPad or a phone is... I think they've... they've I think they've blatantly designed it to work better on those sort of formats. Whereas um... I think, I think that's, I think that's exactly right, mate. Yeah. I think that's yeah. exactly right because yeah, um, it's it, whereas the beauty of the comiXology app was that you could just read it anywhere. Yeah. And, and yeah. unfortunately they've, they've taken a couple of steps backwards there, yeah. but hopefully, you know, if, if they don't, if they're not completely, you know, scuppered, they will, they will, I mean, I do hate this phrase, but it is first world problems, isn't it? Do you yeah. know what I mean? Oh, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. The, the, the yeah. thing is, as well, is I think because it came at a point, you know, when it when they changed over and it all, it all went a bit different, it also came at the point when we were just coming out of lockdown and quite a few shops had closed down during that period. Yeah. Diamond had had that little... Do you remember Diamond had that wobble in the middle of COVID where they decided they weren't going to deliver to the UK at one point? Do <laughs> you remember? Yeah. yeah. Um, and, and all this sort of thing happened and, and kind of... You know, for us who are like, you know, addicts, it, well, we, we, all we can think of is, well, how are we going to get our comics? How are we going to get comics? Oh, Comicsology. And then suddenly they sort of ditched the old system and come up with a new one. And I think it sent a lot of people into free fall as well at that point, you know. Yeah. Because uh, we were just sort of seeing, I mean, we all know comics, apart from probably some, you know, lovely, 
lovely bound omnibuses and stuff will go completely digital at some point mm. you know in the future whether i'm alive for it or not i don't know but it looks like it's probably gonna happen isn't it we'll be jacking them straight into our eyeballs won't we? You know? mark millar was saying something like he does that thing that there's cycles of comics and he thinks yeah. we're coming to the end of one and the start of another relatively yeah. soon oh excuse me <laughs> you your guts. <laughs> so, uh, what what that's going to be, and what the new landscape is going to look like, God knows. Uh, yeah, no yeah. idea. Mm. Yeah, it's weird. Um, I remember um, around two thousand and nine, um, two thousand eight, two thousand nine. There was a show called. Uh, I, I don't know if you remember this. It was called Art and Story, and no. um, it, it was a podcast, and it was one of the. One of the few like comics, really in depth comics podcasts, where where they would really like um, go deep into how comics are made, how they're written, how they're drawn, how they're you know like really dissected that stuff. And I remember at the time, like the talk of like what what is the next thing, you know? And it was so doom and gloom um, regarding like the future of comics because there was this weird digital horizon that nobody understood. Yeah. And lo and behold, like I remember them saying, you know, it's possible that they might come up with some device, you know, kind of like a digital device. Um, and then it's literally like within about two years, they announced the first iPad. And then they were saying, this could be it, you know, this could be it. And then, but even with that, everyone was saying, oh, that's it. That's the end. That's the end of comics because yeah. This, yeah. this thing, this thing is going to, make physical comics go away and what it did is it it revitalized all of comics you know yeah. so i yeah. don't know who knows i mean we're seeing the same thing at the moment with ai aren't we that's the new the new sends everyone into a tailspin kind of thing subject du jour isn't it you know oh, yeah what's yeah. going to happen with that yeah when the only thing with you know i mean i'm guessing you draw in a whackham or something like that don't you so i do miss being, being able to buy original pages i suppose that's you know but that's because i'm old yeah, yeah, I, I draw both. I, I use both. Depends what's going on. Yeah. Really. Um, in fact, you you're responsible for um, a big gap in my um, bank account because you got me started on Comicsology. Um, <laughs> I, I hadn't been using it before, and you gifted me Amelia Cole to read. I don't know if you remember. Um, yeah, I do. Of course. Mate, a cracking. I fucking love that book. Yeah, so. Aww. And the, the the character in Cold Iron is there was a little bit of the Amelia Cole about her, which is you know, which yeah. I really loved about her as well. You know. Um, yeah, you started me down that road. She's a bit like Amelia and Rani uh, from uh, What's yeah. Between, like the yeah. two kind of rolled into one a little bit. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. By the yeah. way, speaking of that, like I've, I've only just recently found this out myself. I don't know. Have you heard of the the Getty Center in LA? It's it's like this museum, uh, I guess, funded by the Gettys. Um, I All don't right. know. Mm. Um, Jim, Jimmy and Cynthia Getty and they um I, I don't know if that's that's their actual names but, uh... <laughs> <laughs> if it's not I'm even more into them now yeah <laughs> it's basically like a cultural museum of, of some sort but like um someone was uh it, it's quite a fancy place you know and um someone was like you know checking out the the uh the exhibitions there and they pop their head into the, the, the zone that is looking at medieval stuff and uh, medieval storytelling. And then they come to a section to do with Arthurian legend. And they, and there is, you know, all these things like Le Mort d'Arthur by Thomas Mallory and all these things. And then, Oh, Excalibur, you know, by, you know, the Marvel comics series Excalibur. Okay. And then right next to it, once the future queen, and uh, so it's been included in this thing, and and someone like sent a message to Adam and DJ saying, "Hey, do you know you're like in the Getty Center Museum?" Like, oh, and, uh, yeah. So you need to just... talk Mrs. B into a flight out there, don't you? Just have a picture with it, don't you? Yeah, right. I know we really should. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Anyway, so well, you... we weren't far from there when we had our little holiday in LA, did we? We weren't. No, we uh, weren't yeah. far. Yeah. 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 That was fun, yeah. man. That was really. That was good. great. What a place. Yeah, I, I bought people with it before, but we ended up at the the best convention ever because I think I was the only person going to it, and everyone else was a guest. Did I? <laughs> did, yeah. <laughs> did, I did I ever tell you what happened? Um, like with my um, with my Hernandez brothers stuff. No, I met them. I met them just before I left. Actually, we had a coffee together with Bob, 
Oh, you, you, we, we all went out and pissed, didn't we? You, me, and Bob, and everyone. Joe Data yeah. and all that firm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's but right. no, I know they were they were a couple of tents down from you, weren't they? In that little market. They were. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, they were, and like you know, as may, some of you may or may not know that, you know, they are for me. They're my favorite. They're my favorite comics creators ever, as okay. they are for many. Like the yeah, Loving Rockets is a is a, an astounding, astounding series. And um, anyway, so Great. so there we there we are. And I've got I brought my Loving Rockets issue one um, with me to get signed. So I, I go in there and uh, I meet them. And I uh, get a photo with them. I get them both to sign uh, my my issue one, and I'm on top of the world. Go back to my table. Um, Sean Phillips, who's another chum of mine, and uh, his his uh, his agent for his for his original art comes up to me, and he says, starts looking through my portfolio, and I'd brought all my best work with me right. in my portfolio. Um, so he starts going through it, and he's going. Okay, we we need let's talk. Like like, uh, give me a call when you get home, and we'll talk about nice. you know, representing you. And I'm like, fantastic. So anyway, so there's me with my portfolio and my Love and Rockets number one. Get at LAX with 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 the uh, with the team going home after it all, and uh, just absolutely on a high. It was an amazing week, wasn't it, Tony? Yeah, oh, it was such a good place, man. The people we met, yeah, yeah it was amazing, wasn't it? Yeah. So then, yeah. So yeah, totally. And uh, so then, <laughs> everybody knows. Everybody, I mean, like literally everybody knows that I am a, a demon when it comes to Bloody Marys. I'm I'm a monster <laughs> for, for Bloody Marys. So I walk. So I walk to the bar in in the in the uh, lounge, and I say to the girl, "Do you know how to make a Bloody Mary?" And she just looks at me and she goes, "Sit down." So she comes back <laughs> at me with this thing that looks like a Christmas tree. Um, and she plonks it in, in front of me and it goes, and she goes, have a, have a bang on that, mate. She didn't say <laughs> it. But, um, and so anyway, so it was literally the greatest thing I've ever experienced. Like it was the most delicious thing I've ever, ever had. And I said, right, give me another one of those. And she, and I had about four of them and, uh, and they destroyed me. And uh, no, they didn't destroy me. They just put me on such a beautiful buzz that I was just happy as Larry. Get on the plane with with my pals. Come off the plane, and then realize no portfolio. Oh no, n- no love and rockets number one. I'd left oh. it. I'd left it at the bar at LAX. Oh, oh, oh no! With shit. with all all my be- all my best work. All my and if anyone's ever flown out of LAX, trying to even just get through the gate there, it's like a zoo, isn't it? It's like a fight yeah. getting into the, oh, into the airport. Yeah. yeah. But basically, because of my 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 human frailty, I left my uh, I left my my work, and it just it's just been swallowed up. And my love and rockets number one. Isn't that tragic? Never got it back. Never got it back. No, no, never got it back. Oh, mate. Yeah. Yeah. I'm glad that I saw that um, that that suitcase at the bar. <laughs> oh, mate. I'm sorry about that. That's yeah. all right. But you know but what? Yeah. It didn't matter because it was an amazing week. It was. I, I still laugh at the fact that we was. I was waiting with you before you went and did. Who did you do that talk with? It was um, Sean and and uh, Brubaker. Oh no, it was the Jeffrey Brown one, wasn't it? Oh that one? yeah, that one. Oh yeah. No. yeah. So we we were chatting outside, and Mary Fleener walks past, who I'd like met briefly the previous day. So do you remember I called her over and started throwing a few lines into her about what she was wearing and stuff, how lovely she looked? And, but what a lovely lady she was. She was like the best ever person. I don't remember that at all, Tony. But I, I remember don't... I said I like your sunglasses. Do you remember we were standing oh, outside? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, oh, she's great. Yeah. It was a top. It was a top top. Top weekend, uh, no yeah. week, week, wasn't it? We yeah, went, we went like, like we we'd get up in the morning, uh, like at six in the morning. We would put on our put on. You our, lot went our, in the sea. You almost died. Yeah, we, you we went fucking... swimming in this with the surfers, like at six in the morning. Went out in the surf, came back inside, went to one of these like weird little American, you know, like food places at seven in the morning. Just ate ridiculous amounts of food, and then you know did our thing. Did the convention? There was that diner, went there at the end of the pier. We went to. Do you remember that was all right? That was pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But I mean, yeah. Klaus and Peter Cooper and 
Ah, oh, it's amazing. Yeah, do you know they they're going to show they're going to throw a good bash this year again, you know. They've got um they're doing it in Barrow and on Windermere, so they've changed. Yeah, I want to go to that. Actually, I must book my hotel. Actually, yeah, yeah. get get in there quick because um, like they've got the Hernan. Well, they've got Jaime. They've got Jaime. Yeah, I think. yeah. So there's going to be a lot. Uh, of Tom Richmond's at it as well, isn't he? I think. Right. From Mad yeah. Magazine. Yeah, yeah. It's going to be good, I reckon. Yeah, I want to go to that. Actually, I was I was saying to Alex at Strange Apparitions the other day. I think I want. I think I'm going to go. Yeah. Mm. I'm not doing Thought Bubble this year, so I deserve a little break. Go away to one. Uh, yeah. Are you yeah. skipping Thought What about you, lads? Are you doing... Thought nah, Bubble? we're not doing no, it. We're not table or anything. Yeah, yeah. Having Fair a enough. year off. Another year. Yeah. Another year off. <laughs> um, but what what have you got? I, I mean, have, have things got busy? Has the event schedule gotten a lot busier for you now? Or are you picking and... You know, you watching what you. Because you do the sci-fi stuff and the mm. comic stuff, don't you? You do both. What with the Star Wars connection? Mm. Yeah, to be honest, like I am, um, I, I slowed down a lot on the conventions even before, even before uh, the pandemic because um, I found that um, w- when I when I was first, you know, you know, trying to make my, make my name type thing, I did everything and it was good, but I ended up. I ended up doing a lot of work that I feel didn't really, it, it didn't really lead to anything. You know what I mean? Right. So I, I decided that I would just pick and choose the the shows that I went to. So like I, you know, I whittled it down to like literally a handful a year and um, try try to make those really count more than more than doing all of the shows. Like there are some people, like say Gary Erskine, he he does all the shows and mm. he makes that stuff work for him you know like he grafts but like <laughs> the, the way the way the way i do it is like because i tend to i tend to stand up and natter to people and then like i'll just pick one or two drawings to do now rather than like do loads and loads and loads and loads of sketches i i've stopped doing that now um, right okay so, yeah but yeah i try and i try and do the whole the uh, quantity uh, quality over quantity thing um, yeah, uh, yeah. It's funny actually because I opened my fridge earlier and Gary Erskine turned up. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he, he's a good man. He's a good man. <laughs> we were next to him at MCM and he was a lovely chap, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah. good guy. Right. Mm. Yeah, I remember that. Um, I, oh, with us, he's got to be right. Yeah. He, he, drew, he drew the filth. Come on now, he inked the filth. Yes. Yeah. yeah. That's a hell of a book, that. Yeah, that's true. So what? So um, what shows have you got coming up then, uh, over the rest of the year? So we've got. Let's see. Where are we? I'm just looking at the calendar. He's got a we'll, calendar in front of him. That's a pro. We've got, <laughs> we've got Thought Bubble in early November. Um, we've got um, Acer Dent- Dentistry on the twenty. 20- Oh no, that's my dentist. Sorry. When's when's the lakes, dude? When's that? Yeah. The lakes is um no. Oh, hang on, I've not written it on there. Hang on, mate. Hang on. It's all right. It's all right. Um, lakes inter. Don't type after Cuba Libre. It's international. <laughs> <laughs> you know what Cuba Libre is. No, what is it? It's it's rum and coke, basically. Oh, oh okay. He's half right. cut. Bloody hell. <laughs> <laughs> That's what people have to do in order to be on this show. They're just a cope. They got yeah. Be... It's the tenseness. Yeah, their blood Four... alcohol has to be at a certain level. Fourteenth <laughs> to the sixteenth of October. Ah. Oh right, it's soon then. Yeah, okay. not, not long. So it's just before my little boy turns two. Ah, oh, crap, man. Ooh. Well, funny enough, no, we won't give it away yet, but next week's guests might be able to tell us all about it. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> so, Yeah, I definitely want to go. Yeah. Uh, so um, there you go. That, that's the next place you can uh, see Nick and check out his work. Yeah. yeah. And uh, wait, what do you have at your table now, Nick? Um, I tend to like have a load of... Um, old Star Wars, Star Wars stock, and um, which is, which is ironic because like the Star Wars Adventures from IDW wasn't released in in the UK, so you couldn't get it here. So oh, I per I personally imported it, and um, so I've got like boxes full of 
of uh, of certain issues. Um, so I, I, I've, I'll, I'll always have that. I'll always have a bunch of prints like my like uh, some of my covers. I, I'm quite pleased with some of the recent Transformers covers that I've done. So I'm I'm gonna have some of those because there's lots of Transformers fans. Um, yeah. I'll, I've, I'm trying to do this thing now where I'm, I'm doing loads of these little A4 uh, really personal designs, like just just letting myself I- invent stuff and just get them down on these little A4 things, almost like like little um, just just sketches off the top of my head, oh, and cool. then I'm putting them into a little portfolio, and people can buy them if they want. Uh, what else? Um, I'll have um, at the lakes. I'll have. That's all I'll have. Star Wars and drawings for now. Cool. Yeah, Are you taking fine. commissions in advance or? I will do, yeah. I'll put the word out on yeah, on the uh, on the socials. So if you know, if if you know, a few weeks before the show I'll I'll put the word out and then That alien you did, man, that was great. Uh <laughs> he's the, done so many the, drawings the, that his brain the, is. You know the, the aliens franchise with what's the name? Sigourney oh, Weaver. Yeah. I you know, like there are a few drawings that, like, all artists hate what they do, don't they? But, like, <laughs> that, that that one, I have to hold my hand up. I, I'm quite fond of that one. Um, nice. I, yeah, that's good. I, I keep rolling that one out because I just think, yeah, I think I must have been feeling pretty good that day because uh, <laughs> they came out all right. Um, yeah, it did. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, love it, mate. Yeah, if, yeah. You, if you want something like that, then get in touch with uh, Nick and uh, order yourself a commission time for these shows yeah but yeah. getting quick because it'll it'll sell out i'm sure i'm not saying yeah, it'll sell out, nick <laughs> do you put the slots out on your website you, was it nick broken show uh i'm gonna say dot com is it i can't remember now it, it, it is you you can get you can get through to me through uh uk. right There's a little thingy on there but the easiest way is just instagram or facebook or twitter just mm, like cool. just message me and i'll get back to you nice one man good stuff yeah. Nice. Very reasonable as well from what yeah. I can see. You you're definitely undercharged, my friend. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Some people are like incredible money. I don't know how they do oh, it. Oh mate. But... I remember buying I won't say the name of the person, but I bought a I bought a commission off someone at New York, like I'd say twenty fourteen. I went back to buy one from them in twenty sixteen and the, a dealer had got hold of them, you know, like a, an agent. Uh... And it was like five or six times the price. Just out of the blue. Yeah, it's really. I mean, the whole original art thing has just blossomed, hasn't it? Yeah. yeah, yeah. The old jam pieces seems to be very popular at the moment. People, mm. you know, doing like the different artists' head sketches on a you know a single single page. Yeah, that's so that seems. To why be quite do you think cool. the original art scene has kind of exploded so much? I suppose there's a lot less of it. D is there? I think maybe. Uh, yeah. I don't yeah. know. I, I think it's. I think it's been partially perpetuated by artists you know artists <laughs> at conventions like you know because because you know there are many artists who will happily draw you a picture you know yeah uh, and, uh, and with and, more and more artists moving to digital when they're at these conventions it's a it's a like once in a lifetime chance to get an original that's true yeah, yeah. i do want to murder that person who said you can't put a price on art but i think you can it should be lower it's more like <laughs> <I would take laughs> <around there. laughs> <laughs> I, I tell you what, I'm intrigued. I'm intrigued by uh, by uh, Jason Wood's whole situation. Like, oh man, because yeah. it, it it sounds like from from the way that Vince talks about it, it's like it, it sounds like he's got a, a museum going on back there. But like, uh, like does he like does he have just like, for Domino? Yeah, yeah, just for Domino. Yeah, and yeah. Deadpool. But well, like, I, I I met him at Heroes. And the the way they seem to they seem to roll. So this is the eleven o'clock comics crowd. The way they roll is Vince and and, and Dap sort of wander around chatting to people and looking at back issues. <clears throat> and then every half an hour, you'll just see Jason run past with his portfolio, going to get collect his nether commission. I think he had. I may be exaggerating, but I I've, I think he said he had seventy at Heroes. Oh, wow. bloody that's hell! Insane. It's madness. That's a lot of money. Yeah, yeah. That's I don't like think a job. You could. Yeah. <clears throat> but he's, he gave me his. I was chatting to him. I saw oi, and he and he said, "Oh, come back." And he said, "He says feel the weight of that," and he had, he let me feel his portfolio. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was fucking really heavy. He was like carrying this around with him all day. You know, 
but the, he, he has got stuff to die for you know and he even he will admit he doesn't consider himself one of the big high rollers you know you've only got to look at the recent dark knight returns cover sale and all that sort of thing that's been going on mm. it's gone mental recently you know it really has mm. Who are these people with all this money? That's what I want. I know, I know. Yeah, yeah. It's not anyway. us. No. No. <laughs> they always say it's retired dentists. Yeah. <laughs> Back to <laughs> dentistry. Wanna... Yeah, do they want to buy a sketch from Boney Desmond? He's got a few yeah. for sale. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Boney Desmond. <laughs> <laughs> hey, um, I heard that um, I heard that stinger that Adam did for EOC the other day. is so funny. <laughs> what, what is that Adam? Uh, are you all living, <laughs> living hot comics in it? Or, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it was brilliant because they had they had him, then then Cliff, then me. We had like three English blokes in a row. Oh no, like... I've not caught up. Uh, have you done one as well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh mate, I can't wait because I, I, as always, I'm behind on everything. I'm just miles. Yeah, behind on yeah they're they're like three hours plus every week, aren't they? Yeah, I think they do one or two a week now, don't they? But yeah, yeah. I, I was I was out for a run when I heard him say, and I was laughing. <laughs> <laughs> you must have looked like a lunatic, Tony. I look like a lunatic yeah, running anyway. Yeah, but to be right. fair, I do only run when people can't see me, so it's fine. Yeah, yeah. I'm running, I'm running away from something. Yeah. <laughs> or after someone. Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. Any, any, anyway, thank you very much. For just That's good stuff, man. Us an yeah. That's, we've been chatting for an hour and a half. Yeah, How did that go? Time we passed. Absolutely yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, oh, my but, pleasure. Anytime. Well, uh, we we'll have to make. You don't want to buy a portfolio, do you? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm sure of one. <laughs> yeah. um, and it won't be so long until you're back on the show next time. Yeah. Um, yeah. We Any won't, we won't, time. Yeah, we won't wait until there's a pandemic in the middle of of it. <laughs> oh, Mate, cold iron though. Uh, uh, yeah. g- genuinely a fucking great book, man. Yeah. Really, well, good. really enjoyed it. Yeah. yeah. Your um. I said it to you in, in a message tonight, but your facial acting is fucking top, yeah. top class, man. Yeah, 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 really good. Yeah. On, on, oh, his art, really on his did. artwork as well as his face. <laughs> hey, <laughs> hey. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, do we have any shout outs this week, gents? Yes. I've got a load. Uh, yeah, first one, I, I, want, I want to kick off by saying okay. it's Jack Kirby's birthday. As we're, as we're yeah, it's, he would have been 105 today, the 28th oh. of August. Yeah, man, what a guy! Just, just shout, a to shout out to King Kirby. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you what I'd love to do one year. Every year they do. I think it's his son or someone, someone related to him, does like a walking tour yeah. of um around the Bowery and stuff like that, Norfolk Street where he used oh, to live. Man, and... You'd love that. Oh, oh man, wow! Yeah, yeah. Talking oh. about where he used to live and yeah. I'm gonna try um attend next year's uh, New York Comic Con. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, yeah. I don't think I'll get to this year's because it's just too just too busy. But like, I'm gonna yeah. try time for next year and october's so busy for cons at the moment it really is yeah yeah but i, I yeah. want to do one of those ones like heroes as well like the one that you just did mate that was brilliant one of the yeah. best experiences of a convention is really? almost as good as hunting the beach <laughs> it's oh. set with crowds <laughs> okay <laughs> yeah there was no crowds hunting the beach it was just me wandering around chatting to people yeah <laughs> Apart from your mate who you went with, who ended up, I was just coming out of a, a, a bar with the missus and he walked past and he was doing that zombie walk thing. And <laughs> and I caught his eye and you, there was just like this sort of look of shame in his face. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. It was Amazing. a funny old. Yeah, yeah good. So, yeah. yeah, shout outs. Sorry, before I derail. Oh, I've got some. So, so do you mind? Go for it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Matt Bunce, such, uh, shout out to Matt. He did some brilliant Atomic Hurt fan art. He did like a two page story for me. Oh, How cool brilliant. was that? Nice. Really nice. Yeah, yeah. Um, big congratulations to Edison Neo and his much deserved yeah, gift. Right upcoming mate. also IDW book Family Time. So I think you'll be able to pre order it soon. Um, I'll be buying it. Anything by him, I always buy. Uh, really good news. Yeah, yeah, he didn't even tell us, did he? He said he had a secret, but wouldn't tell yeah. us. So yeah. Yeah. good lad. Very well deserved. And uh, yes, yeah, sky's the limit. I think. Yeah, good stuff. Another up and coming. Um, don't forget, you can sign up for Cliff Cumber's excellent sub stack called The Long Box. Um, it's free, and Cliff will be um, putting stuff out. And I think he's got an interview coming up. I think it might be this week before one by one of the organs of organisers of SPX. So I'm quite jealous. I think he's got a press pass for it. I, w- I would love to go to SPX. I think I think we had a table. Um, tribute had a table. We couldn't make it in the end. 
Um, make sure next weekend, almost as good as going to SBX's, uh, you can come and find me at Bridlington Comic Con next Sunday. Nice. Um, I'll be there um, with all the tribute stuff, and we'll also have DUI 2 f- physical copies of that t- for sale there as well. Um, and I'm going to bring along some trades and stuff that I don't want, and the, the sale of them will go to the charity as well. So pop over to the table. I'll be right next to Ace from Doctor Who. <laughs> oh, wow. He's, he's, Andrew has promised me that's the case. <laughs> Wow. I've printed out the message you sent me, so I'll be showing it to him if right, I'm put okay. anywhere else. Yeah. yeah okay. Ace over oh, here now. There's loads of other people. Now. There's loads of other college people. <laughs> the PXD that is there, Ian Ashcroft. <laughs> yeah, come and sit here. Um, uh, uh, Damien and Helena, more about them in a second. Um, and uh, last one for me is next week is the 200th episode of our mate Eamon's Mega City Book Club podcast. Hey. We're big listeners and big friends of it, and we've all been on it. Um, I'm on the recent one, episode 199 talking about duit with him which is we had a ah, chuckle fantastic. chatting about that just a little promo for for the new book that he edited so go over and listen to that there's some things i've learned loads from that podcast you know um it's very british comic centric he has some great people on to chat about that a lot of good knowledge there so yeah go, go and listen to that as well there you go there mine nice i've Damn, got, got a couple yes uh kickstarter explosive sweet freezer races yes. from gareth hopkins 10 abstract comics about the paranormal the human condition and the spaces in between a smash for its target, but uh, Gareth's an absolutely fantastic creator. I, I highly recommend you not only back this, but back his patron. You get to see behind the scenes work. Yeah, page do... every day. You go yeah, on that. page a day. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I actually posted. I, I went out for the day yesterday, and I saw um, something in a museum, and it's it looked like the sort of thing that would randomly randomly pop up in one of Gareth's books. Although it was about cannibalism uh, <laughs> yeah, and murder. Would. Um, and then when, after I posted it, I thought. Or oh, was this a bit too dark? And then Gareth replied, I haven't written about that yet, so it's going on the list. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> I've got a shout he put for... quite a funny comment today in the Slack about chairs at conventions. Yeah, I read off. that. That's great. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, we've got Dust Bunny Mafia, issue uh, 1 3. It's, personal. it's business, not personal. When a bug is found deep inside the uh, Fairview Police Department, a war rights between police, mayor, and rival mafia families. Uh, that's by Brett Giuliano. That's, he's been creating this coffee. Uh, comic for absolutely years and mm-hmm. it's worth okay, giving it a shot. Okay. Uh, I think that might be the rest because all the rest of them Kickstarters that have already made their money so yeah. the rest you don't there. need us <laughs> I've got, yeah I've got um, just another one for I got my Metallic Dynamite hardcover through oh um, yes me too Thomas yeah. this week fucking hell what a nice looking book that is yeah the production yeah. quality on that is like oh, the dear. fucking high bar that yeah is... he really knows what he's doing there yeah. on that yeah yeah very good and there's a load of our buddies on it as well as Jordan John Thomas wrote it. Oh, is kind of... it. Sorry, mate. Sorry, my alarm was going off there by mistake. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> yeah. You've and... just been called. Uh, Falpy's in it, Lucy Sullivan, uh, Rock- Russell Mark Olsen, Claire Hemsworth. There's loads of people in it. So if you if you didn't back the, the Kickstarter, I, I suspect you'll probably have a few for sale. Go to find Jordan, Jordan underscore J underscore Thomas yeah. on Twitter. There you go. I know. And... One, I, oh, is there one more time? Yes, finally, yeah. Last three pages of Vanguard issue 20 finally got hey. this week. Hey. It's only taken me virtually about part of a year to get this issue out, but it's fucking done. Absolutely killing it. Thank you. Uh, so once it's out, it's uh, kickstarting Viper 2. So hey. I've got to get that, awesome, get that fired up. Awesome. Phew. There you go. And we know what... Shout-out's al- done. And we know what the alarm is for, because it's that time of the show when uh, it's time to recommend some comics. <laughs> You're on you fire know. today. Can I, I just know. say that? Can yeah, I yeah, yeah, yeah. This yeah, is yeah, gold yeah, standard. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well-oiled machine. Uh. I am. Yeah, I'm very well. Anyway, have we got any um, recommendations? It's Obviously, it's the guests always goes, goes first. So, Nick, would you like to recommend something to our lovely listeners? Yeah. <laughs> don't, 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 well, go on then. Don't let me stop you. <laughs> Nicely, and now moving on to the next yeah, one. So next, uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, listen. A few, a couple of years back, um, before way back when, before the uh, the the apocalypse, um, <laughs> I met a, at Thought Bubble a chap called Ton- Tony Fijula. Um, okay, who is a uh, he's an Eastern European comics creator who is based in Barcelona, and um, he has released a book through TKO um, called The Forgotten Blade. And he is currently my favorite 
comic, like you know, modern day comics artist. I have oh, to cool. say, oh, wow. he has this. If you, his name is Tony T O N I F E J Z U L A Fejula, okay. uh, nice. and uh, man, oh man, this guy's art is so wonderful. It's beautifully expressive. It's it's oh, I, I can't say enough about it, and um, and his uh, his storytelling is impeccable, and his 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 line work is uh, bizarre. I don't quite understand. The best thing for an artist is to find an artist that you can't quite figure out how he's doing a thing, even yeah. if he's even if he's doing what uh, it seems to be standard comic book stuff. There, if there's an element where you just go, I don't know how he's doing that. My then God! You know you yeah, I really like this. Yeah, stuff. yeah. I just, just yeah. looked at his Instagram. My God! Did he do some blood, do some bloodshot or something at one point as well. He's done. He? Yeah, he's he's done. Yeah. He's been all over the shop. Um, he's he does have a, a background in um in uh, animation and stuff. Like, and I think he's done right. a lot of background work for animated stuff. Um, but he's done a lot of comics work. He's worked with. The Greg Greg Rucker, I think he's, he's he's been all over the shop. Yeah, but oh man, he, his his artwork is super super engrossing. So yeah, I love so, that. Yeah, that's yeah. incredible stuff. Yeah. Um. So that that was one. I got two for you, if that's all right. Oh go yeah, yeah. Go for it. So so the other one is uh, an an artist of similar caliber, um, just spectacular, and um, he it's a guy called. Well, it's two guys, Raúl and Ro- Roger, or Ro- Ro- Royer. I think they're both Spanish, um, and it's a book called Jazz Maynard. Okay. Um, so, so jazz, as in jazz, and Maynard, as in is there sweets called Maynard? Gums, there aren't is, they? Yeah, 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 that's one gums. Yeah. But it's spelled like that. So Jazz Maynard, look it up. And this guy does this sort oh, of yeah. sinuous. Like, like really kinetic, but a very sensual inking, um, and his his figure work is like this kind of elongated these elongated figures, but it's absolutely impeccable. There are there are some amazing Spanish artists out there. Yeah, this is stuff. Um, there's some stuff on Amazon for him actually. It looks incredible. Yeah, the Barcelona yeah. trilogy looks great. Yeah. Ooh, so yeah, yeah. Wow. and it's a good price. Those, those are my wrecks. Like I, you could just you could just get lost looking at his uh, figure work. Like his, yeah. his women are hyper idealized, um, as, as are his men. Actually, his men are just yeah. beautiful. You know, um, and uh, there's a bit of the Fabio Moon about him somewhere. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. But there's uh, you know, I'm, I'm, it's not a, it's not a competition. I prefer yeah. him over over Fabio, but okay, uh, both are wonderful. But like his ink, his his line work, his design is amazing, but his his application of inks is super, super, super tasty. Really good. Yeah. There you go. So those are mine. I ordered. Um, amazing. Yeah. Uh, who's next? Uh, so I've got two. So I, so I bookend again. Sure. Yeah. Uh, so my first one is Clear Run, created by Helena Edwardson. So you know, full cards on display. I'm working with her. She's great eyes. So um, I get. To, I got an early copy of it. It's getting launched at Bridlington comic-con this very sunday uh, the 4th of september warnings this is a story about a dog so it makes 50 somethings possibly like me have something in their eye <laughs> um the hero of this story so it's, it's a true story the hero of this story is their dog their greyhound marty damien and helena's dog mm. um the hero of social media um and how he finds a home how he finds safety um at 14 months marty was made to race um um, Greyhound racing, if anyone knows anything about it, is incredibly cruel. Dogs are, re- you know, sort of regularly hurt, and you know they have their ears tattooed with racing numbers, and oh, often put down. It's all, it's an awful thing. But he was one of those poor dogs. Um, and during COVID, you, it tells a story from almost from his point of view at the start of it. And um, in, during COVID, obviously there's no dog racing going on, so he was um, he was taken to a dog's home, you know, like a dog's trust type place. And eventually he finds his way to Damien and Helena's home. And it, it talks about how they made that decision and, you know, how they thought about it. And you know, as you should do, if you're going to take, I've got a rescue dog. Um, if you're going to take a dog on, you've got to think about it. You know, you can't just, you know, these dogs that get taken and then returned, you know, that's no good. And it's just a sort of story. It'll break your heart because the dog, I don't know if you, have you seen Marty on social media? Yeah, I have. Yeah. He's got a, 
he's a character in his face. Yeah. Very There's expressive a face. Yeah. There's a lot of character about him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolute legend. Uh, yeah, absolutely. And um, it's lovely. It's a lovely story. And Helena, um, she's a great artist. She she can draw anything. But as we all, we well know, because she drew my dog Sharknado, um, she's great at drawing animals. And the emotion that you get through this dog's, like the sad eyes of this dog's face. And, you know, when he gets home and slowly he begins to realise he's, he's somewhere safe and stuff like that. And it's I know, I know, I know Helena um, went through a period of doing a lot of uh, um, pet commissions for people. Uh, I know. Um, yeah, and you can find like little videos of her teaching how to draw dogs yeah, and stuff like yeah. that. Really good. And uh, she did uh, three pictures of uh, our, our cats, which uh, oh, of course she did. Yeah, 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 yeah. on the wall at home, and uh, some of Joe's favourite art. She smiles whenever she yeah, looks at them. They're lovely, aren't yeah, they? So good. Yeah, she properly captured the yeah. bastard that is my dog as well. <laughs> <laughs> good old Sharknado. Yeah. 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 Fucking what a bastard he is! Yeah, he's. I think he's having sex with something in the garden as I'm sitting now. Oh, right. He does that. Perfectly. Probably well, a neighbour or something. You know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, One way to end the weekend. <laughs> it's, yeah, yeah. That's what I'll be doing later. The um. So you can pre-order it at the moment. It's just gone up for pre-order. Um. It's only three quid. Um. You can pre-order it to get it sent to you, or you, if you are at Bridlington or a Poppin, and you can pre-order it to collect it there. Which I think is a great idea because it's safe. Yeah. You know, I think that's. I think people should do that more. Actually, I know we've done it with DUI. Um, if you go to um, art92, so it's A-R-T-N-I-N-E-T-W-O, art92.com, you can grab a copy there. Or on Twitter, you can find them, art92, and Instagram the same. But if you once you've bought that, that, comic, that comic, why not go and donate to the Dogs Trust as well? You do that. Yeah. Um, yeah, reading this comic will make you want to have a dog, just warnings. <laughs> you know, make you want to go and have a rescue dog. But it's 20 pages, and it's only three quid. That's a good price, isn't it? Yeah, so to get Ooh. on that one. That's my first one. There you go. Nice. Dan, what have you got? Yeah, mine's a webcomic. Uh, Grisild and Phoebus. I hope I said that first name right. A, a Tale of True Love. Uh, it's an interesting one. You, you kind of you look it on your browser and you can either swipe on your tablet or left and right on your arrow keys. And it's basically a page or panel per click. And, okay. Uh, it looks it's very similar the the art style was reminiscent of kind of uh when you see storyboards for films uh like that it's kind of sketchy and there's a lot of movement in it but it's also quite manga and anime inspired and oh this is the one you sent through earlier isn't it yeah so how how is it spelled grisild and phoebus so g-r-i-s-i-l-d uh and phoebus p-h-e-b-u-s and it's called a tale of true love. Okay, nice. Yeah, it did look good, man. I, I know what you mean about the, mm. the painting. I kind of feel like it's designed for reading on a phone, almost, isn't it? It in does feel like that. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of, so it, it deals with the story of kind of the, the the princess girl and the prince who has been transformed into a horse, and you don't know why. And she has she's on a mission to track down a, a vampire that's done something to her, and he's gone to hell, and the, the two of them have to travel to hell to go and get him and it right. the story kind of it doesn't take itself too serious the the kind of the the horse is kind of like a comedy character but the 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 girl uh is the 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 uh the muscle or the, the the pair it's really really fun read really quick i sort of like blasted through it i've got a little folder of web comics that i've sort of across my travels I've, i find them and I've, I've added that one and i thought oh, i can remember that would be really good so i've gone back to uh, read it and oh, I absolutely just blasted for it. The oh, chap, cool. the illustrated illustrations, it's written by a, a chap called Felix Sintes, S I N T E S, and you can find him on Instagram under Tetsuan Art. Oh, God, it's giving me problems here. T E T S Z U W A N underscore art. I believe he's a French creator, so kind of he's doing stuff in dual language. Not sure where else to read the comic because you get the first three or four chapters on that website and then it mm. sort of directs you to the Instagram. But on the Instagram, I can't see any more of it. So I don't know more than that. You you knew, now know as much as I do about it. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes. So I, I would go and recommend that. It's a really fun read. Nice. Good stuff, man. Nice. Now, I slightly, uh, mine's going to be a webcomic actually. I slightly, um, changed on what i was going to recommend this week but i'll probably do that have you changed week. it to the one you sent sent us earlier uh no 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 that's another Not one the one about a man having a poo that one uh, no, no, no no that's a okay. that's a special comedy one that everyone should check out but no there was um 
I was. It's a web comic that's only just started, um, and it's called uh, the Beekeeper's Tale. So it's beekeepercomic.com. This is from a web comic artist, uh, Ben Fluter. That's F L E U T E R. Um, and I just saw it um, on my social media feed that this he just launched his new web comic. Um, and the the synopsis that it said there the burden of wielding an all powerful blade falls to a small beekeeper, for who better understands what a serious choice it is to sting? And I thought, oh yeah, that's, that's a cool bit of artwork. And I was just clicking on it on my phone. And <laughs> here we go. No, well the thing is, I clicked on it on my phone. Now we've spoken about like web comics having a uh, like webtoons and stuff. You scroll down. Now, the first page of this comic is one of the best experiences I've ever had of Ugh. reading it downwards because it's one image. It's one image that starts uh, um, and you follow the flow of a river. It's just a river just going down. And then as you follow it down, there's all of a sudden there's a sword in the river and then there's a bit of destruction. And as the lower down it gets, the closer you get to the remains of what's happened during a massive battle until like... The water goes from blue to a red to a deep red. There's more and more bodies in the water, until in the like when you get to the bottom of the panel, it's just piles of corpses and like a main character oh, well, okay. led on led on top of it. And that was that's the best experience I've ever had of that kind of reading. I don't know how something like that would translate into a printed book, but that's the that's the beauty of a, like things like web comics. And and there's a couple of pages since then. The story's great. It's like a fantastical story with like magical weapons and bad guys in armor and magic and stuff like that. There's only it's only just started, so there's like three pages, and I believe as we talking today, um, it's going to be Monday updates from now on. Um, they, oh, weekly. Oh, that's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they started off with three pages um, during the first week of launch, and then it's just going to be Monday updates. Um, and I think it's one of those like uh, because they they had already done like. Um, a web comic before that, like, and it had like several hundred pages, but it's it's, but that was like two years ago. So it's this is his first web comic for, a, for a while, and it's just that was such a striking start, to the book. I was like, I'm in. I I keep the amount of times I've looked at this, this long vertical pa- panel, it's it's unreal. It's unreal. Um, so the Beekeeper's Tale, uh, Beekeeper comic. Um, it says dot neocities.org but if you go to um, the beekeepercomic.com or beekeepercomic.com okay. you can you can see it there but I thought it might it maybe wouldn't be as powerful on the desktop but when I've looked at it earlier tonight I was like nope still love this but it was just it was, oh, a, good, it was a really nice <clears throat> making the most of the format there aren't they yeah. exactly exactly so yeah check that out that's mine Tony take us home Okay, last one is the one that we've all been expecting. We've been we've been waiting in bated breath with it, haven't we? Um, Pil Cuyo, which is an uh, okay, Altiplano Volume Three, which is the new and final comic in this little story created by Gustavo Vargas. Flats by Laura Dragon. What is it with cool names in comics? Why haven't I found hey. one? <laughs> Tony, Tony, Tony. Yeah. Tony, what spell the the title again? It's P I L C U Y O. P I L C U P U Y O P Q Y O or Oh okay no. yeah um, Pil- Pil- why I didn't Cuyo. back this I don't know I've got all the others I well, fucking just missed it Picuyo yeah. I, I oh, apologise yeah, yeah, Gustavo yeah. we've yeah. just Gustavo Vargas we spent yeah. the past okay. we spent the past uh, two minutes I blame Brexit for that yeah. um, <laughs> also that's by <laughs> Sophia Foster Foster <laughs> I don't know I thought I was saying that. Um, oh, flats also by so Laura Dragon and Sophia Foster Domino. What fucking? Why have I got a shit name? Uh, English language help by Fraser Campbell. There, thanks Fraser for having a normal name um, and boring. Uh, English like mine. English proofreading by Claire Hemsworth. So it's all people we know in this, isn't it? Spanish proofreading by Gab Contreras. Published by Taku Tinta Press. Uh, mine just came through on Kickstarter. Um, it came along with two prints actually, um, which are marvelous. I'll talk about them in a minute. Um, it's the third part in this story. Um, I probably think it could have done with a recap because it's just over a year. I think the last time we saw his work, I know it thought probably had those sketchbooks in there which we bought. Um, I think probably could have done with a recap, um, but it is absolutely fucking glorious. Um, it's um, A5 full color, like drenched, glorious cover, 
colour on sort of cardstock paper. Um, I do hope he does like a sort of um, BD size reprint of this. Cause I oh, think, that'd be awesome. Yeah, yeah, I do think it's got such um, such depth to the art and there's mm. such detail going on. And it's just glorious to look at. And some of the double post spreads in this are fucking amazing. Um, I, it's, it's a funny one because I don't want to spoil it as well. Um, but what Gustavo does, because he's a clever bastard, is he plays with the concepts of cybernetics and they're in, he's done this in previous issues as well, and the sort of implementation of them in within nature, so within the animal kingdom. Mm. So you've got this sort of nature versus technology thing going on. Um, there's a brilliant, there's a brilliant moment with a sort of cybernetic hamster who sort of pops up out of a hole in front of a, a human soldier and, and sets a mine off, and the soldier goes, "Oh, fuck. you know what I, I mean?" He had, previous ones he had like there was they were transporting drugs in like these half cybernetic guinea pigs. Yeah. Yeah. That's fucking nuts. <laughs> no, yeah, it's so good. And on the front cover of it, if you've seen it, it's got like, is that sort of a some kind of cap? And there's like a cybernetic nutty hmm. rabbit on the back of it. It's just like mental. And he, you know, he really does play with that, you know. There's all those different types of cyberpunk, isn't there? And there is one that Gustavo would have gone on. I can't recall the name, but it's kind of like uh, very much the culture of uh, of South America. Is that right? Yeah. Kind of yeah, yeah, and uh, kind of a- a- interactive with animals and everything is fucking yeah. such a it's almost blend. like a disease. You know, there's a it's like a cool Borg disease almost, isn't it? You know, the sort of it, it's combining those two elements. You know, because mm. the, you know the where it's set is so beautiful and so sort of forests and mountains and stuff. And in the middle of that, you're throwing this sort of. I mean, it really escalates in this last yeah. issue. Um, you see, um, it, it, it jumps between two things. There's this fucking battle going on, which is just incredibly um, well drawn, and but then it jumps back to the more personal moments, and you get the story of the people involved um, escaping, staying, whatever they're doing, um, and and it just you see the, their destiny, um, and then you go back to these sort of bestial transformations that are going on, and it, and it's it's a really interesting counterpoint of what he's playing with there. Um, there's some double page spreads in this that w- honestly j- would would shame J H Williams. You know, there's a there's um there's a double page spread. Oh, I can't, it's a difficult one not to talk about too much because I don't want I want people to enjoy it. But there's it's it's basically a clock face almost. If you imagine the double page spread opening up uh, on a sort of horizontal clock page and and the fight goes round the page with this sort of central bestial face at the center of it and each panel alternates between a red color and a blue color red color blue color but it, it displays different elements of the battle and it's just so well done yeah gustavo is uh he's um he's a bit of a he's a bit of a a legend in the making i think oh, yeah, yeah. a great yeah. man yeah. yeah yeah he's he's got big things in his future i'm sure of it yeah yeah, don't. Yeah, I think we we we've, we've talked about him now. God, probably almost the length of this show um, about how much we think he's five minutes from being picked up by Image. Yeah. You know? and I've seen that this Kickstarter's landed on the desks of a few prominent writers as well who, who've talked about it. Um, yeah. And I've I've obviously invested in some OA from him, you know, in preparation of him hitting the big time and me <laughs> selling, you know, paying my mortgage off with it. So that'll be fine. So come on, Gustavo. Come on. What are you doing? Um, there's a great. Um, it, there's there's some great quotes in it as well. There's some really interesting, really interesting moments of, of dialogue and, and narration. So release the low tech mercenaries is a great moment. Wait till you read it to see that. And freedom without control is it dangerous? They ask that question, um, which is a really interesting stuff. Um, yeah, it's going to blow your eyeballs out as we expected. It came with a couple of. Um, Bookmarks, a couple of stickers, you know, the usual stuff you get with Kickstarters, but, you know, it looks good. And then there's a couple of mini prints, like A5 prints, one of which is by our Tom Trakhanov, who I'm an absolute huge oh, fan of. He is one. Yeah. I know he worked with Pac Nagel, didn't he? I think they did a comic yeah, years ago. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, that's it. That's the one. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I, I just, I, I, I think I like everything that he ever puts on Instagram, Martin. And um, I always try and buy stuff. He did a great june sort of um sketchbook oh, yeah, yeah i've got that too that's fucking great mate so good i wish he you know imagine him doing the designs for one of these films it'd just be marvelous yeah yeah i did laugh i got the envelope back and it was like 
my, my missus is going, where's this from? And there's all these Russian stamps on it and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> I don't suppose we get that through now. Well, yeah. That's the problem. He's still um, there, isn't he? He's still in Russia, right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You can go to Gustav. I'm going to spell it all to you. G-U-S-T-A-F-F-O-V-A-R-G-A-S. Gustavo Vargas. Big Cartel. Vargas. <laughs> you can buy stuff there. Gustavo um, Vargas. And a couple of months ago, there was a great interview with him and Pete on the Lakes podcast. And um, it's very insightful in, in the way he approaches art. And I think it's well worth a listen to him. And I ended up, you know, we hear these podcasts, don't we? Because, because they're by our buddy. So I ended up having a, a great chat with Pete about... The, how it affected me and because he talks about how you approach a page and how you approach it thinking of a story and, and how it works and really good stuff yeah so yeah if you want to um, pay mortgage off buy some original art off Gustavo Vargas and also get Hill Cuyo which I said wrong um, volume 3 there you go yeah Hill <laughs> Cuyo he's also, it. He's also <laughs> he's Spanish. just very good people which is what we're yeah, all about exactly. yeah, yeah. And promoting the, the good the good ones the lovely people um, nice big so, oversized hardback as well. Come on, Gustavo. Yeah. That's what we want off you, my friend. No, no pressure. Just yeah. do do yeah. whatever you want, Gustavo. Hurry up. <laughs> <laughs> Vince, what you just said, you have to say it like this. Él es buena gente. I am not doing that. <laughs> that means I'm not, I'm not, I'm not saying people. I couldn't, but I'm not doing it. I don't want to upset <laughs> so many people right Anyone. now. Anyone. Yeah. I, <laughs> I leave the upsetting to... The I thought he was Scottish, house. this bloke we got on this week. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> <I had both. laughs> oh dear we hope you enjoyed uh, this week's episode folks thank you very much for listening to us as always it's been it's been great fun if there's anything you want us to talk about in upcoming episodes whether it be art digital comics real comics all kinds of things if, is there any particular process about comics making that you want us to re-look into um because it's, it's always good when we um, delve into the process of making mm. comics. Um, you can get in touch with us in several different ways. You can email us, awesomecomicspod at gmail.com. Follow us on Twitter at the awesome Pod. If you do the Book of Faces, go to facebook.com slash awesomecomicspodcast. There's a group page on there called Awesome Comics Talk, which is full of great people, as is the Awesome Comics Podcast Slack group. Um, loads of channels talking about lots of different things, whether it be yeah. com- comic art, selling selling uh like a car boot sale uh channel is all kickstarters but a great community of people on there new just, drawer off this week yeah, yeah. get in touch with us yeah. just... dan started the doctor who draw off this week so if if you want to do a draw a doctor who character and stick it on the slack i'll yeah. put the put the list up tomorrow and then you can bag see god there's so many characters so i'm just gonna yeah. put all the doctors and like if you want to draw a secondary or ancillary character or a monster or something. Someone yeah, should draw. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Someone should draw Mike and Clunes when he was in it. Oh yeah, Kinder. Was it no yeah. Snake Dance? Snake Dance. He was in. There I was go. about to say, was he in there? Listen. Anyway, no. uh, so I'm gonna draw Paul McGann. Doctor Who OG. Uh, you, but you're not gonna do him as a uh, Doctor Who. No, not as Doctor Who. It's, it's just Paul McGann. <laughs> do it from with with nail. Yeah. <laughs> Paul, Paul, if you're listening, we're big fans. Um... <laughs> You know what? He was. This is the Paul McGann trivia here. He okay. was originally cast as Sharp in the TV series, and All they right. filmed the first episode. Then he, I think, he broke his leg or something. And then they had to get Sean Bean in. They reshot the entire first episode, and then that was Paul McGann once again missing out on uh, TV stardom. Is it uh, Paul, right. Paul McGann or Paul McGann? Because that's oh. gutting. Well, no, that's like the like I fucking doctor. love Sharp. I watched. That's an oh. Irish swear word, isn't it? Paul McGann. Oh <laughs> he was the longest standing doctor because he, he I think so he's still doing it isn't he, he does stuff for Big yeah, Finish does, still yeah. does loads of episodes yeah. for them they're quite good actually yeah mm. that's Speaking a job of... for life isn't it being a do- doctor and doctor yeah. Yeah. well we soon found out I'll probably chat to Ace about it when she's at the next table to me won't I? Yeah. Yeah. Speaking, of big fini- no speaking of Big Finishes thank you for listening to us whether it's yeah. on the website awesomecomics.podbean.com <laughs> if you listen to us on Apple Podcasts subscribe and leave a review it helps get the word out about the show and the algorithms and all of that stuff that we're terrified of, but helps get the word out about all the comics we talk about. We're also on networks like Spotify, Amazon, Stitcher, Podnose, Podknife. What are the networks we're on, Tony? We're on Pod Samantha Fox. <laughs> <laughs> That's Fox, not the yeah. Yeah. Uh, comic that she may well do. Probably. Anyway, <laughs> thanks again, Nick, for joining us this week. Where can people find you, your lovely work, and everything else? 
nickbrokenshire.co.uk and then Nick Brokenshire on all the social business. <laughs> on Man. all the social business. Go Gustavo follow Vargas! Go follow him now. <laughs> because, because that rum and Baileys that he's been sipping on for the past one and a half hours is really kicking in. <laughs> <laughs> Oh god, Roman Bailey's like, ooh, ooh, ooh. just thinking. Yeah. Ugh. Anyway, where can people find uh, Ambari? Dan, Dan, where can you can find, find me on Twitter at Vanguard Comic? You can read Vanguard at VanguardComic.com. And Tony, uh, neverironanything.com, easy. There you go. <laughs> Very easy indeed, Tony. As always, I am. You, you can find me on social media at Jester Diablo. And thank you very much again, people, for listening listening to this show stay tuned because there's more comics and events and all kinds of goodness coming up in the next few weeks um but until you hear our lovely voices slipping into your ears like no i'm just gonna finish the show because it's getting really creepy now so (laughs) from now dan tony nick and myself um have a great week read loads of comics make loads of comics and i tell you what he's so full of spice and vinegar the other guys don't have to worry about this week Nick Brokenshire. What should everyone do? Uh, oh, gosh, you got me out. Uh, <laughs> uh, yes. Uh, have a marvellous time. <laughs> I thought he was going to say thought, I thought, awesome. I thought, I thought he was going to say He never makes it to the end of an episode yeah, I, when I, he gets yeah. told off for his rowdy friends. I've forgotten. I've forgotten what he said. <laughs> <laughs> that was, he did drop that on you. Oh, uh, oh for yeah. today. Um... Gustavo Vargas! There we go. Bye, everyone. See ya.